I'm fragile. I feel pain. I hurt. I open my eyes. I crave victory. I do not give up. I feel no fear. I fear no man. I create. I conquer. I hold the power. Make a choice. Just decide what it's going to be, who you're going to be, how you're going to do it. Just decide. And then from that point, the universe is going to get out your way. We can't have another bad year. You've got to get to the point where enough is enough. It's much easier to come up with excuses and why you can't do it. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. If you do what is easy, complain about your situation, your circumstances. You surrender and give up on your dreams. Become depressed and bitter and angry. Anybody can do that. If you do what is easy, your life will be hard. But if you do what is hard, keep coming back again and again and again. Get up dressed every day. Take life on. Taking life by the collar. You say yes. I will do it. I can do this. And you've said to yourself, I'm willing to face the nose. I'm willing for people to laugh at me. I'm willing to gut this out. I'm willing to make this happen. It's my time. It's possible. It's necessary. It's hard. It's worth it. I'm going to do whatever it takes. I can do it. If anybody's ever done it at any point in time in history, then what's possible for one, it's possible for me. And I'm going to do it. And if you do that over and over and over again, your life will be easy. This is kind of hard to understand, but sometimes you can try so hard at something sometimes you can be so so prepared and still fail and with every time you fail it's painful it causes sadness and especially as i saw last night it causes disappointment I've often said a man's character is not judged after he celebrates a victory by, by, but by what he does when his back is against the wall. So no matter how great the setback, how severe the failure, you never give up. You never give up. You pick yourself up, you brush yourself off, you push forward, you move on, you adapt, you overcome. That is what I believe. Everybody here, everybody watching, I won't be stopped. I can't be stopped. You're either committed or you aren't. You're either willing to do everything it takes whatever that might be, or you aren't. You either are willing to, to go through hell and high water and fire and fucking brimstone to get to your goals, or you aren't. And that's why you'll never be what you wanna be. That's why you'll never have what you wanna have. That's why you'll never accomplish what you all over the place. Success, guys, a very, very lonely road, man. And along that road, you're not going to see too many friends. You see your shadow most often. You got trust in the heart of hearts. Inside what you're doing, what you believe in, is a worthy cause, a winnable fight. I wish I could tell you you're tired, go take a break. I wish I could tell you tired, rest for a year. I wish I could tell you that, that it's going to get easier. I wish I could tell you it's going to get easier. I wish I could tell you that if you just keep going, it's going to get lighter. The, the, weight, the weight is going to get lighter. I wish I could tell you that. 
you get to the point where enough is enough, when you get to the point where it hurt real bad, when you get to the point when it's over, when they're tired, when they're frustrated, when they're ready to give up, when they spent their last dime, that's when they get started. But what you cannot do is you cannot quit doing the process. You cannot give up because it ain't what you see. You cannot give up. Work on yourself. Work on your focus. You cannot stop. You gotta work. The problem with you is you see difficult as something negative. I want you to see difficult differently. Are you hearing me? I need you to push through that stuff. Push through it. You can't get through it. The more you go through, the more difficult it is, the more challenging it is. Listen to me, the harder it is. Are you hearing me? The more challenging it is, all you're doing, baby, is building muscle. In life, you're either going to a storm, in a storm, or you coming out. It's a part of life. There's no way around it. So just be careful not to allow the trials and the tribulations to consume you. I don't care if you're a billionaire, I don't care if you're a CEO of one of the most important companies, I don't care if you're an entertainer. Like, I don't care who you are. You can go to the moon. We all have problems. What I'm trying to tell you is this though. Problems are a part of life. But guess what? They're not life. It's not going to be easy. There are moments when you're going to doubt yourself. There are rough times are going to come, but they have not come to stay. No matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, you've got to make it your personal business to make it happen. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to make it in life, you've got to make no your vitamin. You've got to know every no brings you a step closer to a yes. Anybody can stop because someone said no. But there's something in you, in your heart of hearts, that's saying, oh, I'm not a quitter. There's something in you that says, I've got the will to do it. There's something in you that says, I'm going to find a way. People who could help you out and won't help you out because they know too much about you and they don't believe, they can't see this new you. Don't allow those negative naysayers, the people who are suffering from possibility blindness to stop you. Detoxify your life. Let all the negative people in your life go. Can I change them? No. It's a full-time job changing yourself. You are not like everybody else. You can walk outside and find pigeons, but if you're looking for eagles, it's going to take you a minute. You are different. And as you think about your goals and dreams, your personal goals, your financial goals, and whatever that number is, I want you to multiply it a hundred times. And I want to warn you, don't ask yourself how you're going to do it. How is none of your business. I just want you to listen to me. You have something special. You have greatness within you. You have the ability to do more than anything you can ever begin to imagine. You have million dollar ideas, billion dollar ideas in you. There are people waiting to hear your voice. You have a vision of yourself doing more, achieving more, taking care of your family, making your mark, leaving a legacy. You were born to be successful. Is it easy? Of course it's not easy. It's challenging. It requires patience. It requires persistence. It requires a willingness to do whatever is required to create a new life for yourself. Don't be afraid to close your eyes and dream, but then open your eyes and see. For a lot of people, the distance between their dreams and their reality is intimidating and they get stuck. They get paralyzed just like I was in that marathon. And the only way forward is to be real about what it's gonna take for you to achieve those dreams. You have to be honest with yourself. 
You have to tell yourself the truth. You have to tell yourself the truth of what it's going to take for you to be successful. You cannot achieve success without failure. That's why you are here. There's a voice in you that has said, I can do this. There's something in you, in your heart of hearts, that said, I'm not going to let anybody pull my strings. It said, I'm going to control my own personal economy. It said, I've got a dream I want to achieve. I want my children to have a choice of the kind of education that they want. That said, I am the captain of my ship. That said, I'm going to control my destiny. And whatever it takes, I'm willing to do the work. There was something in you that said, I've got to make this happen. There's something in you that said, there's a bigger life waiting for me, calling my name. There's something in you that says, I'm on my way to a greater life. I want you to remember three things. Number one, I want you to never be afraid to make a decision. Be decisive. Don't be afraid to fail. Be fearless. Number two, I want you to remember the power of you. You gotta feel that power. You gotta believe in that power. You have that power, trust me. And last but not least, number three, can't stop, won't stop. The most important element is for you to be able to do this, to be able to establish, most importantly, where you really are in your life today. Where are you? And where do you really want to go? What's going to create this extraordinary life? And to look at it brand new. Because some of you right now, if you continue the direction you're going, are going to be successful and unfulfilled, unhappy and stressed. If I can change, and you can change, everybody can change. That's the There are two reasons of why people are not successful. There are two reasons of why people do not go after their dreams. There are two deadly killers of what causes people to, to, to give up. There are two deadly killers of dreams. There are two de deadly killers of goals. There are two deadly killers of, uh, 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 of focus and purpose. And those one, one of those things is procrastination to continue to put stuff off, to continue to put stuff on the back burner, to continue to say, oh, I'll get to that later. Why do we do that? We do that because we're afraid of something. What are we afraid of? Are we afraid of failing? A lot of us are not really afraid of failing, but we're afraid of the unknown. We're afraid of that success. We're afraid of the thing that is going to possibly come to pass. We all say we want the big things, but we're not afraid of how it might change us. So what I want to tell you today is in the midst of being afraid afraid of being successful you cannot be afraid of successful successful success will only make you better success will only make you better of who you are a better version of you yes yeah, going to change your life that's exactly what it's supposed to do yes yeah, going to change your mind that's exactly what it's supposed to do but that is what we call success you cannot be afraid there's two elements of uh, of fear fear one is you can forget everything and run, you can forget everything and leave. You're gonna face those self-doubts. You're gonna face in the, 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 the scrutiny of others. You're gonna face the, 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 the lies that people speak. You're gonna face everything and you're gonna rise above that. Why? Because you're now focused on your purpose. You're now focused on your goals. You're now focused on who you are and you're now focused on where you wanna be. The other thing that, that, that is a deadly killer of dreams is, is giving up.
inside of you and you have to give up you have to give up on giving up you have to let go of giving up and you have to fight sometimes it's hard but you still have to fight the, the hardest fight is the fight within it's not really so much the money issue it's not so much really God has made you better than who you are. God has made you stronger than who you are. You can never give up on God, never give up on yourself, and never give up on your dreams. So as you begin to look at this decade and affirming that this is your decade, as you set goals that will make you stretch, that will bring out the best in you, as you begin to remove the negative, toxic people from your life, as you decide to take some chances in life, and that's one of the things that's very important, this God said, if you're not willing to risk, you cannot grow. And if you cannot grow, you cannot become your best. And if you cannot become your best, you cannot be happy. And if you can't be happy, then what else is there? Every single thing you said you wanted, you wanted to accomplish, you wanted to do, guess what? We still got time, baby. It is not lost. You still have time. That's right. You still got time, baby. Who are you right now? And who must you become in order to create what you want? What has to change about you? What is it that you're doing right now that would be a liability for you? As you begin to look toward the future and take inventory of yourself, what is it about you right now that you've got to leave this behind? Because this no longer fits. Looking at where you want to go and the kind of person that you must become, the kind of standards that you have for you. What is it that you must do differently? The one commodity that is most valuable on this earth is time. Time to love, time to live. From the moment the human body is born, it begins dying. <laughs> I don't think you, you quite caught that. Let me say it again. From the moment the human body is born, it begins dying. Some happen faster, some happen slower. Some of us help them happen, go faster. And some of them prevent it from happening sooner than later. How many seconds, how many minutes do we waste every day doing things that are nowhere near the goals and aspirations and passions that we have inside? How many times do you go through the course of a day and realize, did I do anything I set out to do today? Write down those goals each and every day. No matter if it's two goals a day, if you can accomplish those, then you're doing more than just making it through the day. You are living and achieving your dreams. Find time to better yourself. Read, explore, research, live life. Do things you've never thought of doing before. That's what it's all about. When you're born, that's that date that they put on the left side of the tombstone. When you die, they put another date on the right side of the tombstone. But that dash in the middle is the most important thing on that tombstone. That is a line that throughout that entire time frame, you were able to impact and touch others' lives. You were able to leave your mark on this earth. You were able to build a legacy that nobody could change. You were able to have it to where people remembered who you are no matter what. When you're living for that dash in the middle, you're going to remember your why. <laughs> your why, why you're here. Not, not the why, why did you do something. Your why, your, your reason for getting up in the morning. Your reason for pushing yourself past the brink of exertion and giving up. Your reason for moving on and, and, and getting things done in life. That dash in the middle. That's the thing that pushes you. How do you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10? 
in terms of your physical appearance, in terms of your health? Do you take care of yourself? Are you allowing yourself to get overweight and out of shape? Are you conscious of your health? Are you watching the food that you take into your body? Do you make a deliberate effort to exercise? You know, it was George Burns, he said, we cannot help getting older, but we don't have to get old. And many of us get old before our time because we don't take time to take care of ourselves. Your environment is a very good indicator. On a scale of one to 10, is it what you want it to be? Do you find it desirable? Are you satisfied? The job or career that you're involved in. Someone said that 85% of the American public unhappy with their jobs. Are you spending eight hours a day just doing time? Doing something that you don't find challenging, that does not make you stretch mentally, that does not stimulate you, that does not inspire you. Something that you don't find a sense of fulfillment in it. If you're doing that day in and day out, it has to affect how you feel about yourself, your level of motivation, your relationships. What kind of impact is it having on your life? Is it nourishing or is it a toxic relationship? Does it drain you or does it build you up? Ask yourself that. How motivated are you to do something about it? Your contribution, your actions. What are you giving? Many people will leave the universe without a trace. No one will know they were here. And in fact, under their name, we could put under there, not used up. Will anybody know that you came this way? What contribution are you giving? What will you leave? What will be different? Because you came this way. Just, just stop for a second. Write down your why. What, what are you doing this for in life? If your why doesn't make you cry, then that's not your why. Again, if your why doesn't make you cry, then that's not your why. Your why should be something so big that it moves your family tree. Your why should be something so big that it changes the whole outlook on how things are with you and your home, your family, your religion, your purpose. Think about your passion. Think about your opportunities. And that's how you find your purpose. OPP. When that why meets up with your passion, your opportunity, your purpose, then you'll find out. The most important day in your life is the day you remember why you were born. And you're going to have to look that darkness in its eyes and not look away from the darkness, but rather look straight in the eyes and say, I no longer need you. I am no longer that darkness. And so that darkness will not thrive. It will not survive. That darkness will die. That darkness will go away. Not because you forced it out, but because you no longer fear the darkness. You let go of, your, you let go of the darkness. Freeing up space for the light. And when the light gains power, when the light regains its power, it will overpower any darkness that may try to seep and seek into your mind and body and life. It will stride far greater than any darkness has. But you must free yourself from the dark by going deep into the depths of it and understanding it. By not running your entire life from it, but instead, right now, today, tomorrow, soon, look it in the eyes and say, I no longer fear you. I have a life to live. Nothing is hopeless. Nothing is worthless. I am powerful. I am beautiful. I am amazing. And it's time for me to start believing it. No longer do I want to stay in the same routine, stay in the same mindset, the same conditioned mind. I want to unleash the power of my mind. I want to dive deep into the depths of the light, into the depths of inner peace, into the depths of joy and happiness and the state of being, not into the depths of worry and stress and depression and anxiety and shame and guilt, but stay away. Not because I'm scared of it, but because I'm free from it, because I no longer need it, because I have one life and I'm going to live it to my fullest ability. Ability.
I just knew in my heart to just go, go all into this endeavor. And so I went, no questions asked. And it wasn't a picnic. The rise up is tough, but it's who you become in the process when you're chasing this unknown, when you eliminate fears. And so my offering is to really analyze what you love to do and to go chase it because making money should not be your focus to do something that you don't really love to make money what is that that's all that is is a transference of stress you are taking on stress at this job that you don't like this is stressful for you so that you have less stress when it comes to finances so is that eliminating the stress? No, you're transferring it from finances to eat at a little better place, to live in a little better apartment, to then develop more stress while you're at work. Does that make sense? The money will come when you're really good at something. I can guarantee it. When you really have an effect, because that will create a polarizing reaction in people that they will be drawn to you. And you cannot be really good at something if you don't love what you're doing. That's the bottom line. Chase this uncertainty where your heart is telling you to go because it knows that it will discover itself if you choose to go down this ambiguity, if you choose to go unfold this mystery because you will discover what you're really made of if you choose to go down this abyss. See, the thing is, for many people, they've tried the same path you're on, and they failed. As you walk this journey, you're going to see carcasses all over the place of people that didn't quite have it. That should inspire you, because you got further than that person and that person. But you're not looking to get further than them. You're looking to finish. How do you know you're on the right path? Where do you go to ensure that? Do you talk to your neighbor? No, you don't talk to him. I'll tell you about the neighbor, guys. That neighbor's going to come in, man. And if you're a little chubby, a little overweight, you'd be like, hey, man, I'm thinking about doing a routine, man, and getting a training program where I lose some weight. He's going to encourage you at first. He's like, yeah, you should, you should. Basically insulting your ass, and you are fat, and you need to lose some weight. That's never support. It's negative shit. Oh, you should lose some weight. So then you, go, you take his advice, and you start training, you start doing something. You start to get in shape a little bit, maybe at his level. Then all of a sudden, he's going to start asking questions. His tone's going to shift, especially as you get in better shape than him. Then he's going to start talking shit. Because what happens now, guys, is that your success is like a spotlight shining down on their missed opportunities. Success, many will love you for it. The majority will hate you. Because your success makes them feel insufficient in their current endeavor. Reminds them of where they could have done it, but they came up short, and how they didn't revisit it. Where they went at it and failed, and failure is what stood. They never revisited it again. The difference between a winner and a loser, the failure is there every single time. It's just the winner gets back up and does it again, and does it again, until it goes his way. So now you're down that path and you're all alone. How do you know you're on the right path? How do you know what you're doing is in the right direction? If you're wondering if you're on the right path, look at the small things of life. How do you do them? When you wash your car, you spend an hour washing your car, you finish washing, you put the hoses and everything away and the brushes. You come outside to look at the job you did, but you notice the spot's missing. What do you do? Do you re-grab the hoses, pull it all out, and finish the job right? Or do you say, you know, that's good enough? And that's good enough. Because the thing about good enough is we don't know if it's enough. Until the nth hour, the final hour, and everything's on the, on the line. We, that's when we find out if it is enough. And if we come up short, man, doesn't that suck? I promise you guys, if today you never say good enough, tomorrow you'll always have enough. What I'm saying is the character of who you are. It's not the title that makes you, it's not the success that makes you. The character defines the success, defines the fame, and it starts right there. Championships aren't won in the theater of the arena. They're won in the thousands of hours in the training room, in the labs, in the 5 a.m. runs, when it's raining, when everyone else is sleeping. That's when it's won. The Harvard champion 
is a light switch that's always on. It doesn't go on and off when someone's watching. It's constant. It's how you look at something. If your name's attached to it, then you do it right. The best of your ability every single time.